Welcome, welcome everyone to another wonderful episode of Owning Her Health. This is Dr. Lisa here and we are at episode 21. So welcome. And we have a wonderful goddess chat today. My friend, colleague, mentor in essential oils, uh, fellow physiotherapist and you know, using a lot of her integrative wisdom with functional nutrition and women's health coaching and blending that in with her oils. So this is Dr. Laura Ricci's show, and I am so excited. Laura is out in Texas, and she has really a global practice, and we talk about how she took a personal journey of being really, really sick and actually working from uh, a place of personal burnout into a, you know, couple of years episode of, of fighting several, several dysfunctions and diseases, and now was able to flip that pain into a global practice where she's using all of these wonderful things. Laura and I are talking about um, some of the coolest ways uh, a healthcare provider helped her pinpoint a pivotal point in her medicine woman journey and had you know talked a lot about our intuitive wisdom how it played a a role in her story how it plays a role in her ability to help other women's stories and we really got into about five minutes into it trusting our own intuition having confidence in our body finding the best and expecting no less when we need care providers, when we need people in our lives to be our, our, our web of support. And, and when it gets down to it, how we need to ultimately be able to love ourselves enough, love our body enough, trust ourselves enough to, in the end, take that information and choose our own way. About 12 minutes or so into it, she describes that shift she felt where it really turned from that traditional model into really understanding who she was and how that helped her finally heal taking a step back which is not necessarily something especially when we're busy and more of the leading lady and in, in charging forward maybe we need to listen to that um i know kate northrup in our in our um wonderful group origin which i i recommend all you guys go listen uh, and and look at type that up on on Facebook and and online, her her group. Um, But she describes it as the fertile void and going into that darkness or that winter, you know, and and, and Laura has a a great story of that, of how her illness... um, you know, at about 15 minutes into it, we get into that dark, darker side and understanding how the body kept the score and then that resolution and how nice it is now. I mean, we could literally, you know, we're, we're, we're joking about some of these, these realizations, which at the time were really, really awful. So I think that's an inspiring story. We finish off about, uh, 25 minutes minutes into it about pain being a motivator. So if you're in pain, Make sure you listen to this because I think her goddess wisdom on that is really, really great. And she graces us with lots of her information on essential oils and where she sees essential oils, maybe even becoming a little bit of a competition there to big pharma. So where is that going to go with us? So definitely buckle up. This is a great, great, great episode for someone who is maybe thinking about going into essential oils or maybe even wanting to know how they could use their physical therapy in a totally different way, different paths. Maybe a woman who is even thinking that she's broken and, and getting some inspiration from Laura's story. So welcome again. And here's another episode of owning her health right now. Welcome to this episode of Owning Her Health with your host, Dr. Lisa Holland, PT. Join Lisa as she starts the conversation on what it really takes to become a healthy, wealthy, and whole CEO of your life. Listen in to real talk by real lady leaders in all walks of life as they open up on personal health stories, wealth, career, and feminine abundant living. Learn how to grow by owning your body, expanding your mind, and aligning your soul with the purpose only you can pursue in this world. Happiness begins with owning her health right now. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of Owning Her Health. Uh, I am so excited today to have my one of my mentors now with my essential oils journey, a fellow colleague we met at um, the um, Integrative Women's Health Institute, working with our pelvic health and functional medicine work and all that integrative women's health and coaching work. And um, so I have on today my friend and colleague, Laura Ricci. Did I pronounce that name right? Laura Ricci, yeah. <laughs> and she is a great power player over Lady Boss over PT. She's a PT like me, doctor of physical therapy. She's a women's health nutritional coach. She does a lot of work with essential oils. She's over at Amarillo, Texas. She has one hell of a story of a goddess journey, so I knew I had to have her on. And I'm just so happy and blessed to have you on, Laura. Thank you, and welcome so much to Owning Her Health. How are you today? Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I am great. This is so exciting. <laughs> Good. So we're just going to have a nice gal chat. And um, I want you to let everybody know, sort of in your own words, I, I kind of gave a synopsis here of, of, of what you're doing. I know you're working virtually. I know you changed really how you're helping other women own their health and other people own their health by your own journey. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing now. Yeah. So I'll talk a little bit professionally and then personally, because I feel like it's evolved and it's yeah. kind of changed on this path. But like you mentioned, I'm a certified women's health and functional nutrition coach. I've got a global practice there and I love working with my health coaching clients. And I kind of came from this world of being a physical therapist and actually getting a little bit burned out and having my own health challenge and crisis, which kind of evolved into this work that I do and really just kind of incorporating all of these different things like the functional nutrition piece and essential oils and self-care and lifestyle change to really just help us along this healing journey because it's this lifestyle, this this process to getting well. And that's what I love and what I, I think has kind of become my passion is to just kind of help and support people with different things along their healing journey. And we often teach what we need to learn. <laughs> Yes. yes, which we have to remember because sometimes we think we have to be the expert in terms of like the almighty expert and not just an expert through our story. So I love that you say that. Yeah, because I kind of felt and I'm still on my healing journey. And for a long time, I felt like, oh, gosh, I don't know if I can do this work if I'm not cured or like, right. if I'm not I'm all healthy. Doing. Well, how am I telling others? Yeah. And so it's been this interesting thing, but I've been finding that by being authentic and where I am in my healing journey, that actually lets people know. And I have this compassion and this empathy that I get it. I'm like, oh yeah, I have been there. And to be able to support people and kind of be a guide and be like, oh, you know what? I was there too. And that's just reassuring for people. They know that they're not alone on this yeah. process. And that's so powerful. Important. So important. I love that you do that. I think that's something that, you know, people, that's why they're going on YouTube. That's why they're going on the websites. They're seeing all this kind of, they looked, they used to look at just somebody else's testimonial, but I think it's getting down to when they're getting in the offices with these people, or now that they're honestly, it's because they're paying money that they know they're paying as opposed to just paying that monthly insurance thing and not realizing where it's going. Um, they want to make sure that there is that relationship. So that's awesome. And um, yeah, so what do you think? So how did you get, I know obviously you have a story that I want to definitely get into um, personally with your illness that you brought in a little bit, but how did you get how did you get there? Were you feeling physically ill? Did you, was this a big surprise? Is this something like looking back that like you're, like you really sort of intuitively knew for a while? Yeah, that's a really great question. So interestingly enough, when I really look back and one of my healthcare providers actually had me do a timeline of my life and it was a very interesting experiment for me to go back and think about all the different things that had popped up. But one that we keep going back to that I think was a little bit of a catalyst that I kind of had dismissed was when I was two and a half, my appendix ruptured. Ah. 
And we actually didn't know um, it, it had ruptured three days before they caught it. And by some miracle, I am still alive and with you. <laughs> well, you're supposed to be here helping everyone else and doing what you're doing. <laughs> exactly. It wasn't my time, right? It wasn't my time. And it's an interesting thing that my mom knew that something was wrong. And she was dismissed by healthcare providers saying, it's just the flu. It's just, you know, you're, you're an over worried mom. Your child has the flu, go back home. And by day three, my mom had called and said, my child is dying. I'm going to the ER. You can meet us there if you want. Wow. And it's been this amazing thing throughout my journey of my mom kind of saving my life in that aspect by trusting her gut instincts and her intuition to get me the help that I needed. And that kind of being a role along my journey too, of being told by people, well, it's in your head, well, we don't know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that I feel like is a big platform for me, for people to, one, my big message is always, always, always trust your intuition and your inner wisdom. And if you have doubts about something or you don't have peace about something, get a second opinion because it could save your life, change your life, change everything. And through this process, I actually, looking back, if I look back to the year or two years before I got sick, I definitely can see, oh, wow, like this was coming and I was feeling very burned out and just a lot of things had happened. I had graduated PT school. We got married two weeks after we moved. My grandfather passed away. My mother-in-law got colon cancer. Wow. Um, it was just a perfect storm. And I was working in a clinic that was doing some unethical things. You know, I was seeing 25 patients a day. It was, it was insane. It was insane. And that's not sustainable. Right. <laughs> so I think really before I knew what listening to your intuition was and what that felt like, I could tell like, Oh, okay. I'm getting kind of burned out and this isn't feeling good. But I also didn't have the, I don't know, the confidence to like, get up and leave. And I feel like sometimes if we don't listen to that, <laughs> the circumstances just happen to where it's like, and you're out. <laughs> like we're forcing you out of this. Right. We tried to give you hints and that isn't happening. And it, for me happened at first with pelvic pain and kind of going through this journey with, with pelvic pain. And um, again, being told you're crazy, this and that. And that's what actually got me into pelvic floor physical therapy. Was to learn those things. And then it kind of evolved into, um, I just started gaining a lot of weight. I got really pale. I would work at the clinic and then I would come home and I would sleep for 12 hours. Like I was just exhausted. And I thought something was up with my thyroid because I had a family history of that. But the doctor told me, no, it's not. He refused to check my thyroid. Said, no, nope, it's not your thyroid. Yeah, you're too young. You don't look like the picture, right? Yeah, you're <laughs> depressed. That's what he told me. You're right. depressed. Come on, Prozac. Yes, exactly. Everything. Exactly. <laughs> and I knew that wasn't it. And I refused to take the antidepressants. And I got a second opinion. And it was actually my ob -GYN, So I credit him uh, as being my little earth angel here that he listened to me, palpated my abdomen and found a mass. And we thought at the time it was a hernia. So we had a CT scan and they said, no, it's, it's a mass. And then we did a biopsy and the biopsy came back benign, but I was having all this pain and they said, okay, let's take it out. Well, it had grown from golf ball to racquetball size to softball size wow. in the two weeks to the surgery. And I remember them telling me we got it all. It's not a desmoid tumor. And then the pathology reports coming back inconclusive and me thinking, oh, this is a little weird. And then two weeks later, getting a call from the surgeon. It's never good when you get a call from the surgeon. Hey, Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is not, the, this oh, is not somebody goodness. else um, saying we didn't get it all and it is a desmoid tumor. So that was kind of a life-changing moment in my 20s of being like, wow, um, where do we go from here? Because... I really thought, well, this doesn't happen to, you know, young people. And I mean, I knew that stuff was filling off, but I didn't know it was that. And it was just a very rare, rare sarcoma that two to four out of a million people get. And we went on this path um, of seeking out experts. And that's the other tip is find the best of the best in your area. <laughs> and for me, that was actually going to MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, where they have a team their sarcoma department that specializes in this type of tumor. And I was told, you know, you've got a 50% recurrence rate. 
I asked, is there anything that I can do? Cause I didn't like those odds. It's like flipping right, a coin. You're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> and at the, at the time they had told me just, I said, what about diet? What about lifestyle? What about this stuff? And they just said, keep eating the standard American diet. <laughs> right. And, and I thought that long ago, right? No, this was no. uh, six years ago. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's taking a while. It's taking a while. <laughs> yeah. And that just kind of horrified me. And intuitively again, I thought, no, like this, no. And I, that's where I found Jessica Drummond with the Integrated Women's Health Institute. And I started working with her. She became my health coach and I started changing my diet and I started noticing, wow, there's so many um, things that are getting better and there's a lot to this. And so I took that one year certification in women's health and functional nutrition coaching and, and just started learning and and it became a passion of mine of like, wow, this is a missing link. And this is kind of a piece of things because part of that was they put synthetic mesh into my abdomen and it herniated. So they put more synthetic mesh into my abdomen and it herniated again. And when it herniated the second time, I went and again, sought an expert, I did my research and found an expert in, he's a plastic surgeon specializing just in the abdominal wall in Dallas, wow. Texas. And we saw him. And he said, you need a complete abdominal wall reconstruction um, because of the size of the tumor that had eaten through the rectus abdominis, part of that six pack muscle in the abdominal wall. We need to take all of that synthetic mesh out and reconstruct. So they actually released the obliques and, and some of the fascia and built me a new abdominal wall with my own muscle, which was amazing that they could even do that. But after that, he had said, you have had two hernias. You just had this huge reconstructive surgery. Like I was in the hospital for five days. It was, wow. it was kind of crazy. And he said, you cannot work as a PT for a year. You can't lift anything over five pounds. You can't like, no. And at first I thought you've got to be joking. <laughs> I, like, like, I just spent so much of my life and money and money. Degree. <laughs> this. And now you're telling me, and I thought, oh my gosh, there was this kind of duality of panic, a sense of who am I right. if I'm not a physical therapist and I'm not doing stuff and what's going on here? And then at the other hand, a sense of peace that I was like, wow, I think this is going to be the first time that my body is actually going to be healed from this because after open, open abdominal surgery, basically a vertical C-section and taking a softball-sized tumor out, I was back in the PT clinic two weeks after that. Wow. And I knew I was not ready. And, but my surgeon was like, yep, you're ready. Go. You're all stitched up. It's just like yeah. when they have a C-section for real and you're like, uterus is outside you for a few minutes and they just flop it back in and say, you don't even need to see a PT after that. Like, don't even worry about it. <laughs> exactly. It's crazy. So that story, Laura, that just really grabs me. It's so strong. It's so powerful. You were so young. And mm -hmm. I would, I would think that um, that accelerates you really in touching to that, almost that matriarch wisdom of like what I've seen, you know, you don't, you didn't need the 50 years to be able to counsel other people. Like you said, the intuitive wisdom and, and then being able to even like see your mother and her wisdom that, that she might have not even seen because of time situation you know, things that happen later on, you know, it's just society doesn't support it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think now, you know, how did that influence? Like, how did you take all of that? And the funny thing is, is you said like, who am I without being a PT? Because we so identify with like how, again, other people view PT. Mm -hmm. But I particularly think you're totally a PT right now. Right. You know, like as you're talking about even oil and that because you have that appreciation and that wisdom. So again, us like nullifying wisdom and thinking it only has to come one way. How did you bring all of that together and then form sort of what you're doing now? I mean, some of it obviously was necessity, but like what made you think like, how'd you get into the oils? How did you, you know... I guess it was just good that Jessica started teaching a, a, a certification program. That's sort of just kind of, I'm hearing that it was just more of like things just flowed in as you needed it to 
well, you know, when you, when push came to shove, you kind of like, okay, there's that, I got to, what can I, where do I go? Did it get to that point where you just sort of gave up in terms of like fighting and just sort of taking a flow or did you kind of fight it still and resist it for a while? I think I kind of resisted for a little while. I was just kind of, honestly, when I first got the cancer, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like I just gone through this, like we're trying to figure out the pelvic pain, right. all this stuff. And I was just like, oh man, um, that was very humbling. And I kind of got into this just dark place and just being kind of angry with God. I'm just kind of mm-hmm. being like, what is this? I'm not understanding it. And it took me a while. And I think it's hard to see when you're in the trenches. Of course. In that, dark, in that darkness, it's hard to see any lights ever going to be there. <laughs> yeah. And it's, but I can look back and I can see, like you said, guides came in, teachers came in, things came into my life right when I needed them to kind of help me. And now I can look back and go, wow, that wasn't happening to me. That was happening for me in a lot of ways because I, everything from my thought process to what I eat to my, my career, how I work with my clients completely changed. And I feel like I am one of those highly sensitive people and that whole seven to seven in the PT clinic, do more. We need to be more productive. We need to see more patients. We need to do this. That just wasn't working for my body. And now I have the flexibility and the freedom to schedule in self-care, to schedule in time to cook for myself and, and do those things and, you know, get a massage or do stuff that really, that my body needs to kind of bring me into balance. And it was a big wake up call in a way, because I know now what my body is capable of doing. If I stop listening to those whispers and to my inner wisdom, and if I ignore that. And so now before I felt like, Oh, I can't trust my body. Like, look what it did. Uh, and now I actually feel like I work with my body and I'm like, yeah, like, let me help you with this. And I used to think of that, like being sensitive, like needing a little bit more downtime or rest time or things as kind of a weakness, but I don't see it that way anymore. I actually kind of see it as my strength and bringing balance into that and just honoring that and honoring who mm-hmm. I was, was mm-hmm. really, really powerful. But like you said, it's so funny. It was um, just kind of coming in and having my own health coaching person um, to teach me how to listen to those things. And that was a big lesson that took me a while to learn. But I think now I'm grateful that, wow, I learned these things in my 20s. Right. (laughs) Instead of it getting like way, way later in life. Yeah. When you have like you know, you're really invaginated in that career and you're really, you know, you've got those, that, that, you know, the, the dog, the kids, the clinic, the, this, and then, wow, how do I do this different? Like, who am I when I've built my whole like 40 years on that? And sometimes that's unfortunate. You know, sometimes when we're not connecting, we get to be masters. I see that all the time in the clinic. You've been a master for 40 years at pushing that stuff down. But now it's called thyroid disease or now it's called, you know, whatever. It could be now it's divorce. <laughs> now it's, you know, midlife crisis and, and all of this. And when you get down to it, it's, it's sort of, it's tragic, number one, because us as healthcare providers, you know, shame on the healthcare industry and all the schools for not teaching us more inner wisdom, intuitive guidance. Um, we're so focused on that evidence base just being what we've logically come to conclusions on that you and your story is showing how just because A plus B, again, it's a bell curve. You know, we keep forgetting, um, that that means that there's some people that are not in that, you know, middle percent and we're missing them and, and they're not missing it. They're not missing it. They're saying stuff and we're not listening. So we're not learning to listen enough um, as a society. And I think that especially for women, like you said, this is our superpower. Like we get this blessing every 30 days or so to tap in to the wisdom. There's wisdom there with our hormones. The physiology sets us up for wisdom. There's all of this that it really seems like if you look at the big picture, we need to be listening to ourselves more. We need to then 
have society listening to us more. You know, the men in our lives need to listen to us more because we're tuning in more, you know, but we're not doing it. We're not owning it. We're not owning it. We're sort of, you know, whatever, manipulating it. It's an inconvenience, you know, and we sort of lose all of that power of being psyched up to the moon. I mean, how amazing is that? You know, you could look outside and even when we lose our cycles, we have established the moon. I mean, we can, we can look around. So I love, I love, love, love that you shared that. And, and yes, you're blessed. You have now this, like, you know, you work in the, in the motherly vibe, you working that out. You have that, you know, made in fire sort of, you, you started in that career and this and that. And, and then that matriarch wisdom, I almost feel like with you, you're so strong with the mothering and the matriarch. Is there anything you'd go back and say to that maybe even young girl before she was even officially doctrined into maidenhood with her, her, you know, mm. her cycle and things like that? Is there anything now looking back? Cause you realize now those superpowers you'd say to her? I think I would tell my younger self that it's going to be okay. Continue to trust yourself. Continue to trust your intuition. You're going to go through some really challenging times, but they're going to make you a stronger person. And you're going to come out of these storms completely changed and transformed for the better. And it's going to help and serve a bigger purpose. Like I feel like healing myself isn't just healing myself. It's, it's helping to heal others. It's so much bigger than me. Right. I, and you know, <laughs> like, you're not the first woman and a big reason why I sort of left my sort of, for me, it wasn't that I couldn't do it. I chose to sort of build, I built up this center and then I was just like, you know what? I just feel like I need to be talking to the Laura's. Like I, Laura's not walking in here because she's got her own thing going on and I have to like find her and it's for this conversation of like, like this, like literally I, you're not the first person and I myself that I feel like we almost were like called up. It yes. was like somewhere around 2010, 2011. It's just all of a sudden the universe was like, all right, uh, you guys, you, 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 and you you're in this class now and like you said you were ready and I'm come on and and like and yeah it was like a lot of dark a lot of personal discovery a lot and we all kind of had our own stories of how we went but it evolved us now to be all in this conversation with this history I mean I don't know about you but like my mentors I didn't know jack about their backstory I mean people people are I'm sure people dumped about Fifteen, twenty thousand dollars into McKenzie and Paris and all of these people in physical therapy, and they don't know jack about what the heck they're getting their story from, and even why they started studying that. <laughs> and and yeah. uh, I think you know it it really validates that medicine woman, that big picture story of healing others, like the world. It's not even like just healing people's body; it's like healing people's psyche and their their perspective and like personal accountability and and so that's why I love the coaching aspect mm. being so you know that's really and again shame on healthcare industry not teaching that across the board to coach people out of pain to give them their action sheets and then meet them where they are instead of throwing and and being that you know patriarchal hierarchy this is what you do because I know you more than you do which reaffirms that whole other story you were talking about. So what do you think in terms mm. of um, like right now, where do you, where do you see everything going with, with your story and the bigger story I just talked about? What do you see for like the future you down the road, let's say five years? Yeah, I, I really see myself as a wounded healer. I really see, that it's so much bigger than me and it's a lot of this isn't about me <laughs> like you said and I I went from being a passive participant in my health journey to being woken up <laughs> like that and really taking an active role and taking on the responsibility for my health and healing and no longer putting it in somebody else's hands and saying fix me but 
taking back that power and that source and saying, wow, okay, yeah, there's a lot that I can do. And being open to it, I think is, is the first thing. Cause it's funny, as you said, like even something like essential oils, I really was like very resistant to that, very resistant to diet. I thought it can't be my diet. No, <laughs> it can't be that. And then when I finally got to the point where I feel like pain is a very motivating factor. Uh, yes. Well, and it yeah. was, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's telling you something, right? And it's really, for me, it was, okay, I, I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to be open to more things. I'm going to be open to acupuncture. I'm going to be open to functional medicine. I'm going to be open to all of these things. And I feel like it's a piece of the puzzle. And that's where medicine is moving is instead of just looking at one thing, you know, like in the clinic, if I was looking at somebody and, you know, they come to me with knee pain or whatever it is. And I was really, you know, kind of concentrating on that. Yes. Look above and below the chain, but in that area. And now I feel like we're three dimensional people. We're mind, body, soul. We can't just, you know, like, and I remember kind of intuitively thinking that in the clinic, like there was, I remember distinctly a patient that had neck pain and I could come and I could work on her and do some manual therapy stuff and some different things and it would get better. But she hated her job. She absolutely hated her job. And when she was talking about it, she was like, oh, no, 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 you know, everything is tightening up. And, yeah. And I was like, Woof, okay, we need to, but I remember thinking no amount of PT that I can do on her is ever going to give her a, a long standing, you know, resolution to this until she leaves this job. <laughs> Right, until like, she literally gets the monkey off her back that she keeps carrying and all the woulda, coulda, shoulda she keeps carrying in, you know, on top of those shoulders. I yeah. agree. I and agree. it's it's interesting, the, the perception, because I kind of have both. I have some people that really respect what I do and, and kind of coming on this, this evolution and seeing that I really do walk the talk. I really do do the, what I'm telling people to do. I do it with you. And then I have some other people where... Um, like, like as an example, I was, I was teaching on essential oils or something and, and it was a lady who was, um, a nurse practitioner and had said, Oh, do you think you're going to go back to the clinic and, and, and do that? And I said, well, at least not right now. I'm, I'm still healing and I really love what I'm doing. And I love that the coaching allows me to incorporate all of the things that I've learned to help people. Sometimes I'll put on my PT hat or I'll put on my functional nutrition hat, but all of that. And she said, it's really a shame that you're not using the skills that you went to school, that you spent all that time and money and everything to do. And it was funny in that moment, I was able to kind of separate and see Oh, those are her beliefs. Right. Mine. Like, like that's her reflection of what's going on. But I actually feel like I'm so much more of a benefit because of going through all of those and the work that I'm doing. So it's, it is interesting, but there is a little bit of pushback, I think, from <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, I, think, I see that a lot, too, in conversations that I'm having. Like, there's just such that resistance. Like, I just had a conversation about, you know, I showed a... a you know, I found a, an article from 2001 that was just, basically, it was just let me just show you a different way of looking at like the hierarchy for research. And like, can we just look a little bit more at this and that? And it's like immediately the first person's like, so you're totally against the scientific method. And I'm like, no, 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 didn't say that at all. But you know, like it's all, and I think it's because again, we tend to identify with the roles we play mm -hmm. as opposed to identifying as the people we are and again, in healthcare, you know, again, I know that industry the best. I know a little bit of fitness and health and wellness with yoga therapy, but they're in the more healthcare realm. It's, it's an idea of, wow, what, how, who am I if that person's in charge? You know, what am I bringing if they're in, and that's really the coaching model. I see that as the biggest resistance that they're like, well, what if they decide wrong and I get sued? It's like, well, what, what, who's, how do you know that what they decided is wrong? Like, whose ego are we talking about? Who is it? What's the real issue here? It's like, you know, and, and it is, it's flipping. And I feel like we're sort of at the edge where, yeah, there'll be, some of us may be burned. It's called carrying the cross and starting the wave. You know, it's just, that's being a catalyst, but um, owning that, owning that. So 
I want to make sure in a couple minutes that we have talk a little bit about the essential oils because I just think, you know, I used them and dabbled in them again, being, you know, Western modeled. And I was actually a lot Eastern, but in yoga studios and this and that, again, being sensitive to people's smells and, you know, how open people are because they're just as biased in one way as, as, as Western is in another. Um, I really only used it for the aromatherapy. You know, I didn't really use it for app applying to the skin and indefinitely internally, which I know there's a little debate whether or not, you know, people should do that or not. But um, tell me a little bit, maybe just a, a synopsis of where you see that medicine and, mm. and your contribution, you know, in that medicine or just that medicine in general coming in to all of this, helping us sort of own our own health and make choices. Yeah, that's, that's really beautiful. So I feel like essential oils are coming in. They're another piece to the puzzle. They're a way to support yourself. They're not the magic bullet, but I don't think anything is, but it's a combination of adding that in. And what I love about the oils is that they work in so many ways. So they can help you with the physical stuff, but they also help with the emotional piece of the aromatherapy and the olfactory system and, and calming down your central nervous system, relaying things from memories. That's why our sense of smell is so powerful. It's linked with that limbic system in our brain and can do so much, so many things, a way to support yourself. And what's really exciting is now we're seeing hospitals and different like john hopkins is coming in and different areas that are able to do more research on essential oils and adding them into their practice both for their patients and for the healthcare providers that are burned out the nurses the doctors the people that are there and finding ways to really validate i love when science validates what we intuitively yes. know <laughs> yes. like, i'm so excited with the yoga world because i'm like Right. Thank it's, you. It's, we can call it breathing. You know, that's okay. I'm fine with that. I don't have to call it pranayama, but here's the research now. That's yeah. Nice. It's because you can feel different. Like you can put an essential oil on somebody and feel different. And it's cool that now science is kind of showing why that is and where that's coming from. And I, I actually think essential oils are going to start giving big pharma a run for their money. And I think that there's a little bit of fear <laughs> from mm -hmm. Big Pharma there, but um, there's power in plants and there's power in going back into nature. And I kind of look at the essential oil as like the plant's immune system. And that's what really helps to kind of protect that plant. And we have these gifts and we can use them too. And just along my own journey, when different medications weren't working for me, or I was getting all these awful side effects or things, and I could put an essential oil on and get relief. Um, and I was very skeptical and because again, I was like, show me the evidence, show me the research when I was in that phase. And now I'm kind of open to more things, but more and more research is popping up and validating this. Which I is know. Exciting. And then we, again, you know, you're the research as well. Like, yes. you know, that's basically how it is. If you go and jump in poison ivy and, you know, I guess me as, as a mother with my kids, I kind of parented a little bit like that. Like, well, they'll learn when they, you know, I told them four times, but do it that fifth time and you will never do it again, you know? So there's almost, again, robbing us of our, just figuring things out, that common sense. I mean, sometimes I feel like we're getting so smart, smarty pants, that like we're letting common sense just kind of walk out the door. And common sense is that universal wisdom. That's why it's called common. Because everybody, no matter where you come from, no matter your gender, no matter your car you're driving, has privy to that. But you have to do the work to hear it. So, I, I mean, I love that. And I, and I do think, I do think, that, you know, now they're seeing that at the cellular level, we have things we can study now. And they're going to have to have a conversation. I almost hope that actually if, if one of these companies is smart enough, they'll start putting it in the goodie bags when, like, interns go into school or something and like here's your little in tune or here's your little whatever and just let them use it yeah you know, just let them use it let them prove it to themselves because like my my yogi Sri Dharma always says he's my teacher he's like you have to be discernment and that's what I hear the most mm -hmm. out of this conversation is practice discernment there's information everywhere we're inundated with it but the discernment comes from your inner guides 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, that inner tribe that just sort of has seen you, the child that's seen you, you know, we have these voices. We get in tune because of different things and they have a lot to say. So being quiet doesn't become, I'm wasting my time. It becomes, I'm saving lots of time. I'm saving lots of money. I'm saving lots of pain. That future girl, that future woman, you know, that future mm. person. So I, I love that, you know, little things like essential oils can start us sort of going back to that. Like, yeah, why does that work? And why does it feel so good to just go out in the sun and makes me smile after a rainy day? Like, there's something to it. So I thank you. I thank you for being a fellow unicorn. I, th I thank you for, you know, going out there because it's true. Not everybody's on our side, even if they find benefit. They are like feel embarrassed saying it, but yeah. if there's help there and you're somebody that's been called up to help, somebody's got to do it. So I thank you, Dr. Laura, for all of that. Is there any place we can find you to make sure we get all this yummy? I know there's a couple of, of different places. Yeah, so it's my pleasure. This is so much fun. And yes, you can find me in a lot of places. <laughs> so I'm on Facebook and Instagram and Periscope, just at Dr. Laura Ritchie. I'm on YouTube if you just search keywords, Dr. Laura Ritchie. My website is lauraritchie.vpweb.com. And I also teach free virtual essential oil classes once a month in my private Facebook group. So you can just search Dr. Laura's Essential Oil Education and be added to that. Um, I have a podcast as well with my oils bestie where we talk about just using essential oils. It's called Two Curls on Oil. And you can find it on Facebook by just searching the number two curls on oil. And if anyone wants to reach out, you can find me also, you could, you're welcome to email me. My website is women's health coach at gmail.com. Awesome. And I will have all that on the lips and show notes. Um, so if you're subscribing on you on iTunes, make sure you go to those links. That's off of my Dr. Lisa Holland PT page. And if I post things on Instagram so that you can get over to that lips and page, that'll bring you over there. But thank you so much, Dr. Laura. I want to respect your time and, um, your wisdom has been great. And I know it'll inspire some thoughts and to look into it and definitely do she's my mentor with the essential oils if i can be of any help if you're local to me um in charlotte or working with me with some of the coaching stuff let's get you hooked up into some of that because it's good stuff for you if you don't even worry about how am i using this with my clients for you um so that's that's really it and um my phone's going off here sorry about that <laughs> what happened? But, um, you know it's the, the the fact of being imperfect here in, in our in our podcast but thank you so much laura and you know here's another episode of owning her health and thank you so much for your wisdom take care thanks so much bye Thank you for listening into this episode of Owning Her Health with Dr. Lisa Holland, PT. To learn more about her personal and professional development service, visit her online at drlisahollandpt.com.